One of the best things about Batman the Animated Series is the way the show's writers took established comic book villains and reimagined them as bitter, tragic characters. Arguably the best example of this is Mr. Freeze, a campy, cold-themed thief in the comic books that was reimagined as a tragic, heartbroken figure out for revenge. The BTAS version of Mr. Freeze was so popular that this origin became Freeze's default origin across pretty much all media. The BTAS follow-up show, The New Batman Adventures, continued in this tradition and mined Batman's back catalogue of unused villains with some bold new takes. We have The Tragedy of Annie, their version of the fourth Clayface Lady Clay, and Calendar Girl, a cross between the one-and-done villain The Mannequin and Calendar Man. I have to think that the writers of the Batman comics at the time saw what was being done in BTAS and challenged themselves to do the same exercise with some lesser known villains, particularly writer Chuck Dixon who was very clearly fond of BTAS, after all he brought Lockup to the main comics continuity pretty swiftly after his on screen debut. One of the characters that Dixon had reimagined was Firefly, a relatively unknown comical villain. Before I continue with the rest of the video I just want to take a moment to plug Manly Bands who have very kindly provided me with a 20% discount code for you viewers to use across their entire site. The main thing that attracted me to them is their very cool selection of officially licensed DC rings that are available to viewers in the US and Canada. They have designs inspired by Batman, Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, Nightwing, Green Lantern and a bunch of other DC characters, as well as rings that contain fragments of genuine fossilized dinosaur bones. If you are getting married, are already married, married and want to update your wedding band or you just want to buy some really cool rings, head over to manlybands.com forward slash serum lake to get 20% off your order. Just make sure that the discount code serum lake is applied at the checkout. And yes, you can use this discount code on sale items to make even bigger savings. Thanks again to Manly Bands and with that out of the way, let's get back to the video. The original Firefly was a man named Garfield Linz, a theatrical lighting expert, who realised that he could manipulate light to make it seem like the entire theatre was on fire. He then used these abilities to stage a robbery, taking all the belongings from the panicked crowd. When Batman and Robin intervened, Linz was able to escape because the duo mistook the light of a Firefly for the light of Linz's cigarette. Taking this as an omen, Linz would adopt the identity of the Firefly. This is a direct nod to Batman's own origin, where he took inspiration from a bat smashing in through his window. Armed with a belt that could generate a thousand lights and a purple and green insect-like costume, Firefly would go on a crime spree using his new belt to blind his targets and take their possessions. Batman would defeat Firefly and his crew by reflecting his blinding lights back at him. He didn't appear in many comics, although one of note was a Creeper special illustrated by Steve Ditko, you know, the guy that co-created Spider-Man as well as the Creeper. That ended with the Creeper flinging Firefly from the top of his secret base in a lighthouse. There was a second Firefly whose costume was yellow and green and shone a blinding beam from his head named Ted Carson. Ted came from a wealthy family but lost all of his money through gambling, and he's another one of these villains that would be swiftly defeated and forgotten. Post-Crisis, in which the DC Comics continuity was reset, Firefly would make two appearances in The Outsiders, where he was treated as a complete joke. In his second story, he absorbed the light powers of Outsiders member Halo and became a bit more of a threat, but he was defeated fairly easily and had the memory of his victory erased from his mind. So it's at this point where I'd usually point out that the writers on Batman the Animated Series had a philosophy of taking the best parts of Batman's comic book villains and embellishing them while dropping the associated nonsense that builds up over the decades. However, in this case, Firefly, he wasn't able to be used in the initial run on BTS. No, instead his rejuvenation came in the Batman comics. In 1993, during the Batman mega crossover Nightfall, Firefly was reimagined by Chuck Dixon and Graham Nolan as a pyromaniac that had been locked away in Arkham Asylum for years, which seemed to suggest that Firefly had been in Arkham since he was first defeated, potentially discarding his encounter with the Outsiders? I don't really know. When Bane's assault on Arkham freed all of the villains, Firefly would go to work committing acts of arson against popular attractions like the fairground and the zoo that he never got to visit as a child. Later stories featuring Firefly would show us what he saw in the flames that transfixed him so. Angels. Although they look like nudie women to me. Anyway, gone was the green costume with a laser belt and instead Firefly wore a more practical grey outfit with glider wings and a mask that entirely covered his face presumably to prevent him from succumbing to smoke inhalation or getting burnt. Armed with a simple flamethrower, Firefly would release his pent-up frustration by burning down as much of Gotham City as he could. Firefly would later become an arsonist for hire, working for Black Mask's False Face Society, and during a botched job, 
became engulfed in flames, covering his entire body in burns. There's really not all that much more to him other than that, but I think we can agree that the 90s reimagining of Firefly as a pyromaniac was an improvement on the more campy original. Firefly the joke character was a bit too similar to Killer Moth for my liking. When it comes to Batman the Animated Series, Firefly did not feature in the show because the censors over at Fox Kids were not comfortable having fire-themed villains. Fire is too dangerous for children! And if you're interested in what else the censors at Fox forbade being used, check out my video about how censorship had actually improved Batman the Animated Series. But by the time of the new Batman adventures, the show had moved to Warner Brothers Kids, a completely different network with less strict rules. This is why we could have a child Robin, villains could use more modern looking firearms and Batman could be seen punching his enemies directly in the face. With these new rules, the writers on TMBA were able to play around with the tone of the stories a bit more. For every dark and serious episode like Growing Pains or Mad Love, you had a more off the wall episode like Beware the Creeper or Critters. The episode that introduces Firefly, Torch Song belongs in the former category. It's a pretty dark story about obsession, rejection, and abuse. Now, love is a recurring theme in BTAS and TMBA. At least there are villains who think they are motivated by love. For instance, we have the Mad Hatter and the Invisible Man Lloyd Ventrix, whose villainous acts are done out of a warped sense of love. The Mad Hatter initially wanted the girl he liked to feel the same way about him, but used his mind control tech to take away her free will when she spurned him for another, while Ventrix would use stolen tech to make himself seem successful in an attempt to regain the love of his estranged wife and daughter. Now they both think they're motivated by love, but in reality they're motivated by arrogance and their own feelings of inadequacy. They cannot handle rejection and are incapable of accepting the decisions of others. A woman daring to say no to them causes them such emotional turmoil that they feel the only natural response is to lash out at them and the world. I'm sure most of us have some experience of a breakdown in a relationship and the sadness and anger it can cause. It's perfectly natural, but these villains are incapable of moving past their initial feelings and moving on, and that's part of what fuels their villainy. Firefly is a villain that continues in this tradition. The TNBA Firefly is Garfield Linz, pyrotechnics expert who works for the singer Cassidy, who by the way looks exactly like Chelsea Cunningham from Batman Beyond. Maybe they're related. When we first meet Linz, he's lurking in the shadows and has an argument with Cassidy, his now very obviously ex-girlfriend. Cassidy makes it clear that she wants to keep things professional with Linz, and he does not take it well. From our introduction to Linz, we immediately know the type of man he is. He's awkward and lumbering. Look at his posture and body language. Everything about him just screams that he's threatening. After he places his hands on her and makes it clear that he's not giving up, Cassidy fires him. In response, Lynn sabotages the pyrotechnics display of Cassidy's show and almost burns her to death. While he doesn't say it, he's clearly thinking that if he can't have her, no one can. When the police raid his home, the entire place is a candlelit shrine to Cassidy. The whole section just underlines how one-sided their relationship was. These aren't photos of the two of them together. They're pictures taken from magazines or promotional material. It's just so impersonal and reiterates how baseless Lindsay's obsession with her is. He clearly doesn't know the real her. He's besotted with the way she has been marketed to the world. It's the person he thinks she is, not not who she actually is. That might be because who Cassidy is, is someone that's actually kind of unpleasant. She's bossy, demanding, and tries to manipulate people to get what she wants. When Batman visits her to find out why Firefly is after her, she turns on the charm to try to get Batman to protect her, clearly not knowing that he doesn't need the promise of a reward to protect her, that's just what he does. As soon as Batman leaves, Cassidy drops the facade and says what she was really thinking. Creep. And I think that's the root of Firefly's problem. He has this idea of who Cassidy is, but when reality is presented to him, he resents it and lashes out, rather than accepting that he was wrong about her. He also seems to have a problem with female autonomy, as if the moment Cassidy agreed to his advances, or heaven forbid, made advances of her own, that's it, there was no turning back, she was his property now. When he eventually captures Cassidy, she tries to talk him down with a vague offering of finding a way forward for the two of them. Now that's not a lie, but it is entirely open to interpretation. Firefly could interpret that as them getting back together, but for Cassidy, a way forward could simply be running away. Firefly's getaway plan is to pump a hyper-flammable gel into Gotham's sewers, ignite it, and amidst the chaos, escape with Cassidy. This shows us the lengths he's willing to go to achieve his goals. Just think of the thousands of lives that would be put at risk, the homes and businesses that would be destroyed, just so that he could run away with Cassidy. 
this woman that he doesn't really know. At this point we're introduced to Batman's toyetic new anti-fire armour, complete with fire suppression gun. And it would have been cool if that was actually one of Mr. Freeze's cold guns, pardon the pun. And he swiftly puts an end to Firefly's scheme. Towards the end of the episode there's some not at all subtle imagery of Firefly trying to escape from the burning factory, only to be dragged down through the flames by a tumbling sign in the shape of a demonic face almost as if he was being dragged to hell by the devil himself. Firefly may have been captured, but the damage he did to Cassidy would be lasting. The end of the episode shows Cassidy freezing in terror at the mere sight of flame. The episode's writer Rich Fogel has said that he planned to revisit Cassidy in the series if it had continued. His idea was to have her become the second Firefly as a way of dealing with her trauma. But it was not to be, as Warner Brothers executives put the team to work on a more child-friendly show featuring a teenage Batman. And we all know how that worked out. Firefly would only appear two other times, one brief appearance as an arsonist for hire in TNBA's anthology episode Legends of the Dark Knight, again demonstrating a complete lack of regard for human life. He leaves the three children in the burning theatre before Batman turns up to save the day. He would also briefly appear in the Justice League episode Only a Dream Part 1. Following a prison break, Firefly teams up with fellow escapee, the pyrokinetic Volcana, his ideal woman clearly, but they are swiftly recaptured by the Justice League. And that's it for Firefly and the cartoons. One significant introductory episode and a handful of cameos. Much like his comic book counterpart, he has a solid gimmick, but there are only so many stories you can tell featuring him without retreading old ground. Now in the DCAU, it's not unheard of for significant stories to take place in the tie-in comics, but that's not the case with Firefly. He would be seen as a member of Black Mask's False Face Society in Batman Adventures Volume 2, performing acts of arson for Black Mask. However, he would be easily defeated by Batman. In Batman The Adventures Continue, it's said that Firefly was caught in a devastating fire that almost killed him and had to recuperate with the snake-worshipping cult Cobra. We are told that this is the motivation for Firefly's new, more extreme costume. Now, it would transpire that this was an imposter posing as Firefly in order to manipulate Batman and Robin. Deathstroke's sidekick Sonny was the person in the new enhanced costume, but let's not get into that now because that's an entirely separate can of worms. Although I do appreciate the nod towards Rich Vogel's original idea of a second female Firefly being revisited. Both of these scenarios, Firefly working with Black Mask and getting severely burned while on the job, are directly taken from the mainline comics. There haven't really been any particularly interesting developments for the character at all. Even Torch Song went over familiar ground, so it's probably not too surprising to see that he wasn't used very much. Firefly's motivations are pretty straightforward, but the whole stalker angle never really resurfaces. I think he works best as muscle for hire rather than a primary villain, and that's completely okay. Not every villain has to be a psychologically fascinating recurring character. There is room for more general one-and-done villains. Having said that, he is a rare example of a goofy character that went through a drastic reinvention in the comic books first, before making his way to the cartoons. From there, the TNBA crew picked up the ball and added an additional layer in an attempt to make a fairly one-note villain more well-rounded, even if it was just for one episode. Okay, that's the end of this week's video essay. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, share the video, tell all your friends about me because it really helps. Another great way to help me out would be to make use of the thanks button. You can donate a buck or two to help me maintain the quality of these videos. Likewise, I offer channel memberships for $1.99 a month. This will get you early access to my weekly video essay, sporadic members only videos, priority responses to your comments, an icon on your profile indicating that you're one of my members and custom emojis. Next week, I'll be back with my Valentine's Day special, and we're going to talk about the one thing that could bring a premature end to Batman's mission. Love. Hope to see you then.